All right, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone. It's great to see you here. I'm Steve Luco, and I'm excited to show you some improvements we are developing for agent memory and actions. I'll give you a brief introduction to the type agent project, and then we'll jump right into a set of demos uh, about how to give agents better memory and faster actions. The demos uh, run about eight minutes, and there's six different clips, so I'll be pausing in between some of those clips and just giving intros to the, to the next demo as we go. So the what is type agent? Type agent project is how to make logical systems like operating systems and databases work with stochastic models, models that work on probability like transformers, such as large language models. And as we've been working on this, three principles have emerged from our work. So the first principle is distill models into logical structures. So you know uh, with things like DeepSeq R1, they have distilled larger models into models that are more efficient for certain domains, um, but still have high performance. But you can also distill models into logical algorithms and objects, structures, uh, that you can then use directly with traditional software systems. And that gives you more determinism, no possibility of hallucination. So that's principle number one. Principle number two that you'll see a lot of in this talk is use structure to control information density. And so one of the things about transformers, which is the underlying architecture of uh, the large language models, is that they use attention heads. So there's a famous paper, attention is all you need. And it basically talks about how if you can pay attention to different parts of an input at once, you can do things like if you're trying to translate something, switch between like Mayo Jaune and Yellow Jersey in the case of French and English. So if you can control information density by using extracted structure, you can then focus the attention heads on what you want them to focus on. So that's what use structure to control information density is all about. And finally, we use these logical structures to enable collaboration. So instead of just putting something in a black box reasoning model and letting it go through all the steps, when we do long running tasks, we create an explicit search graph, and then we use that to have many different models, programs, and people collaborate to solve a long running task. You're not gonna see those uh, last principle in the demos uh, due to lack of time, but you'll see the first two principles, uh, you'll just recognize them applied again and again in the demos. So uh, one little mention before we show the demos, the repo, its, it's status is technology demonstration. So it contains a lot of experience exploring how to do agent actions, memory, and plans. We're working toward installable libraries. We're working toward integration with Microsoft products. Don't have any announcements about that today. And they're definitely not intended or advised for inclusion in your products and services just yet. So don't like go this evening and stick them in your production service code. Um, okay, here's, here's the repo. Um, it's also in the, um, in the printed materials and on the AI Foundry Labs page for type agents. So you can go to AI Foundry Labs and get all this information at your leisure as well. And with that said, let's, um, let's jump right into the, into the demos. So this first demo will be about taking structured RAG, which is our main memory technology, and applying it to conversation memory, making agents be able to remember things from years ago conversations, from every conversation that you have ever had with it. And you'll also see fast actions using learned patterns, which it was principle one in the, in the slide I showed you. Those are podcasts. I, dis I discussed the agent some time back. So let's see. Um, in that Kevin Scott podcast, it talked about what were the books they mentioned. And so this runs a search over conversation history 
and pulls this information up so you can see the various books mentioned. Then we can also ask follow up like, you know, what did Kevin say about AI in that podcast? And again, the agent is able to pull up those conversations. Well, it's time to switch gears again. Let's uh, set up a meeting to review uh, code for a big check-in. Um, so this is interacting with the Graph API and uh, we have set up a meeting. Let's confirm that, see it up. And then let's add Isaiah to that meeting. And we can confirm that Isaiah is now listed as a participant in the meeting. So um, while here, I'm also reminded of a PR I was tracking. So let's see, did a PR about um, semantic crafts get checked in? Uh, the agent is able to look up notifications that I've received and uh, confirm that the PR was in fact checked in. Okay, so the second clip, so, so there what you saw, you saw um, all kinds of details from past conversations, even emails that you brought in as a knowledge source, able to be used in an agent conversation. And now what you're going to see is how details that are remembered from past agent conversations then flow into as the parameters to future actions that are taken. So you'll see like actions create memories, memories then are pulled back out by the model and then they flow in as the parameters into new actions. So you'll see that cycle in this clip. In this demo, we will show a user interacting with entities and events extracted from past conversations. Let's start by looking up an event. Specifically, um, let's look up a show that we went to see a few months ago. And you can get assets that we uploaded around that same time, so photos from the event, and uh, also take actions based on this. So play an album from that show. We can also look up related entities or events. So there's a restaurant we went to for dinner afterwards. And now that we have this, we can take actions on, the re on these extracted entities. So we can make a reservation at that same restaurant. And then we can add this event to our calendar. To recap, the user has been able to look up entities from past conversations, pull them into the main conversation history, and interact with them as if they were just parts of the regular conversation. Thank you. OK, so you saw how the technology works when integrated into a, an agent conversation in our test shell. And so now we're going to go a little bit behind the scenes and we're going to see, well, OK, how does it work and how does it compare to the current use, usually used method for memory, which is to uh, use classic rag, like take text chunks, embed them, match them against the user request and try to stick them in the prompt, which is what is usually going on right now when people talk about memory. So let's see how that compares. We are trying to create human-like memory with superhuman precision and recall for agent conversations. We are experimenting with a technique we call structured rag that extracts dense structured information from conversations and uses that information for enhanced precision, recall, and speed. We added 25 episodes of Kevin's podcast, Behind the Tech, to our structured RAG memory implementation. Kevin loves books. So we asked Structured RAG Memory to list all of the books discussed in his podcast. And it got all 63 books. 
For comparison, Classic Rag was able to recall 15 of these books and one author. Structured Rag did substantially better because it works with dense structured information instead of relying only on semantic similarity. Structured Rag also enables direct exploration of memories. Here, we ask directly about the books. OK, so now when you saw a little of how it works and how it compares with classic RAG, and now we're going to move a little beyond the central application of structured RAG, which is conversation memory for agents, to see if we can also bring in other knowledge sources like email and images so that the agent can remember those things for you as well. Experimenting with applying structured RAG to emails. So for my experiments, I use structured RAG to index a couple of years' worth of non-confidential emails in my Outlook inbox. The index is totally local, sits on my laptop. Let's ask some questions about my inbox. Let's start by asking, what does structured RAG help with? Structured RAG helps with the following. It's a structured approach to RAG. Um, retrieval of relevant documents, generative models, reduce more accurate and contextually relevant responses. OK, so that was a detailed summary of a bunch of emails in a nice, succinct package, done again by extracting key nuggets of information from the text blocks, indexing them without using embedding, and bringing them back in dense packages to use the LLM to create a, an answer. OK, so now let's try images. And with images, we're going to use pre-existing structure, like EXIF information on each photo, such as location and date and so on. And we'll be joining that pre-existing structured information with the structure that was extracted from the unstructured text of the description of the image to see if we can combine all that and let people ask about their photos. We have been experimenting with structured rag and images. So I took all of the images from my cell phone camera roll from the month of December, uh, which is 181 images, and I indexed them using structured rag. And now I can ask some fun questions about that data, like what countries did I visit? And as you see here, it tells me I was both in the US and in Canada, which I can confirm are true. I can ask more specific questions like what states are represented, and it will tell me that both Washington and Arizona are in this data set, which again, I can confirm. Um, I can ask it when we were in Arizona based on the timestamp of the images. And if I ask, sure enough, there you go. I was in Arizona the first week in December. Um, while we were there, we visited Fountain Hill, so I can ask about the um, what county that's in, and it's going to tell me Maricopa County, which is correct. While there, we decided to do some hiking, so I can ask some questions about the hiking trails there. And as you can see here, it's going to go, give me a list of trails, which came most likely from an image I took of uh, the trailhead. All right, and this last one is about using the same yeah, techniques to remember build, projects build, and create, status of projects. Alongside the montage agent, which is responsible for helping users create slideshows of their images. For this demonstration, I have used structured rag to index approximately 200 images off. Also want to create a montage from the Arizona trip, but I'll deal with sorting through the images next time. Awesome. Thanks. Goodbye. As you can see here, I've reopened the type agent system after some time away, and we have the chat history here that's grayed out, and we also have a new message from the agent telling us that uh, we were working on this Arizona trip montage, which is great because it jogged my memory, and so I can ask it, what's the status of the Arizona trip montage? And it's going to tell me that 
it's been created, but I have not yet reviewed the images. Great. Open the montage canvas. And so here we go. Here are the images from our Arizona trip. All right, so that's the last clip. So just to recap, what you've seen is some experiments in new technologies for enhancing agent memories and for making agent actions run faster. The, the key principles that you saw applied are distilling models into logical structures that you can deterministically use and controlling the information density with which you interact with models to get better accuracy and, and speed. So thanks a lot for coming and uh, go to the AI Foundry Labs site for more information. Go to the repo for more information. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day.